I'm Dalton, and this is our 2001 Dodge Ram 3500. And you can find us on social media at our home on the move. And this is Rory, or Lorelai. We're gonna start with our exterior features, and we have a chassis mounted water tank on the bottom, 350 watts of solar, and a Weeboo cell phone extender. And we have the max fan up top. And on the other side, I mounted a propane tank underneath so that we didn't have to take out a cylinder and it's on the vehicle. I'm a metal fabricator and when we originally got the van, the step right here was all rusted out so I had to weld up a new one and install that to get in the van easy. I also custom swivel seat so that we had a lot more room because it's really inconvenient living with a seat like that. So, got a nice chair, can work. When we bought the van, the seat was attached to a box like this. And I took two plates and a third plate and ball bearings and put ball bearings in between the plates so that the seat swivels freely and it's held by a nut. And then I have a locking position when we drive that I lock it in so it holds it in place. And a lot of metal fabrication went into making it work. <laughs> Lots of welding. So now to show you a little bit of the inside of the van. I'm starting right here with our lovely sofa. We upholstered all of these blocks to make it a little more comfortable. And then underneath we have our sneaky refrigerator storage and then this is kind of where we keep our shoes and anything that gets too dirty and then in the back is where we kind of keep like dried goods and anything that won't go bad that doesn't need to be in the fridge and then behind that we have the sneaky under the bed storage which is laundry camera gear kind of a whole mix of everything but it works for us this is our bed area. Originally we designed it thinking we were going to sleep horizontally, but the longer we've been living in here we ended up liking sleeping vertically, so what we do is we kind of rearrange our couch cushions and these little seat cushions to give us an extra two feet this way, which works out for us. Everyone's comfortable and we have enough room for the dog now. When everything is all set up lengthwise it's about a queen, and right now it's about a full set up horizontally. Closet wise. It's not quite equal, but we have these first two which open up. Our hinges keep them open so we don't have to hold them up, which is great. These are mine. Then this back one is kind of a mixed bag. It's mostly mine with some linens and some random stuff. And then in the back, Dalton manages to fit all of his clothes in one tiny little drawer. But we have a couple winter coats and things hidden underneath. And then our other sneaky storage is we kind of hide all of our summer clothes in our pillowcases, so we kind of switch out our wardrobe depending on the year, or time of year. Everything you've been seeing so far is completely made of pallet wood. We were really on a budget when we first started, so we collected lots of local hardwood pallets, tore them apart, and repurposed them. And then to kind of keep the nautical, kind of earthy theme, we went with rope handles which were also great because you can't bump your head or your hips on them while you're walking around. So they've worked out great for us so far. One of our favorite things in the van that we recommend to anybody who's in an RV or a bus or a van is this little seeker fan. So this is a 360 oscillating fan. It has three speeds, but it really helps us get airflow and kind of circulation in the van. And it really helps on hot summer nights when it's just really hot and sticky. It gives you something, a way to cool off. And then our other fun thing, on our first iteration in the van, we didn't have a mirror, which bugged me a lot. I feel like I always wanted to pick at my face. I look at my face and do my makeup. So when we did the rebuild, we found this guy at a garage sale. It used to be in a hotel, so it kind of pulls out so I can sit in the bed or sit over here in the kitchen and do my makeup. As Kat said, most of our build is pallet wood and we did almost our entire kitchen area of pallet wood, even our drawer faces, our drawers, 
and we have a table made out of pallet wood to piece of plywood that flips open that can give you extra space and even a space over here to eat but i'm a little big so made these drawers by gluing pallet wood vertical and these you can tell they're all like made from the same piece i just cut one piece of wood that was glued together to give it symmetry and same with the front it's just pallet wood glue so we have four drawers on this side and four drawers on this side and two junk drawers one bathroom drawer made out of pallet wood and mostly it's all kitchen stuff raw ingredients more kitchen stuff blender rice cooker rice cooker comes in handy big time and it's mostly just all pallet wood this is spices more kitchen stuff and it's mostly all recycled from pallets okay so the mini kitchen tour we started we have the same wood throughout the van for our countertop and then we covered it in resin just so it would be a little bit more durable up top we have more storage this is where we keep our oven and some bathroom stuff lots more kitchen supplies and coffee supplies and here is kind of backup food storage we keep a lot of cereal and granola bars and then we have all of our pots and pans hidden away up here but my favorite part is this little backsplash Dalton added. Our first iteration of the van build, we didn't have it. And water from the sink would kind of get up in the cab, which was annoying. So we added this little guy to keep everything nice and dry. So to get even more storage, we built this little cubby up here, which holds our little two burner stove. We have a little propane hookup somewhere back here that we bring out for the stove but it lives up here to keep the counter clean and then we have some extra picnic blankets sweaters kind of stuff we like to have right at hand to make life easier this is my favorite spot in the van this is where i find harmony in my feet and i stand yeah but this is where i stand and this is where i do dishes this is our sink and it is operated via foot pump the way it's closed now it's open. It's operated via foot pump and the water runs from the tank in the back up through the van, underneath, up into the foot pump. And the foot pump you can use when there's no power. So that's why we put a foot pump in just in case we lost power and we didn't have power to run water. And we have a single gray water tank. I think it's a six gallon that we dump every three to four days. One tip on how we get fresh water on the road is our jerry can lifesaver it can filter any kind of fresh water so puddles rainwater rivers streams snow and you just put it in there you compress it and then it comes out the bottom and it's crystal clear you can get charcoal filters to make it taste better and we love our jerry can it helps us get water whenever we need it on the road. So the whole van is insulated with uh, wool insulation and the way I attached all of the wood was I attached running boards horizontally to the metal frame and then put the vertical boards to the horizontal strips. We're going to talk about the electrical. In the electrical we have an extension cord running to our inverter. We have a thousand watt inverter with 200 amp hours of battery. We have the WeBoost. It's 200 amp hours of lithium power, a thousand watt inverter. All right, so there are 12 windows in this van, which is a bit ridiculous, but we didn't want to give up any natural light when we were building, so we decided to keep everything. But in order to be stealthier when we camp, we built these blackout panels and they basically attach with screw stops. So half of it is screwed into the wall and then every night we can just go around the van, put up every panel and be completely blacked out so people don't know that we're in here while we're sleeping. How much did we actually spend on building the van? It's probably our most common question. We did everything for around 
what, 11, 10 total? It was about 10 total. Um, yeah, so we got the van for 3200 mm -hmm. It was an old transportation vehicle that had been garage kept for 20 years, so we really lucked out. It was owned by the state. Yeah, it only had like 86,000 miles on it mm -hmm. when we first got it. It was mm -hmm. deal of the century in our eyes. And then after all the mechanical components, the electrical, electrical pricey screws, plumbing, it, it's about 6800 in mechanical stuff. The wood really didn't cost us that much, yeah, but the it was more, was the electrical yeah, it was mostly electrical. And then, then it was mostly labor intensive to take apart the pallets, but it took me about two months to build the first iteration of the van. And then it was like a week and a half to do the renovations. Another common question we get is what do we do for income on the road? And most of the time we freelance. We do a little bit of everything. I have a degree in general fine art, so we do a mix of kind of web design, product and lifestyle photography, a little bit of videography, and then some graphic design on the side. And then we kind of just keep the ball rolling. We'll do gig works if we feel like we're really low on money. Mm -hmm. And just kind of bounce around with different jobs to keep our funds up while we're traveling. Some advice that we could give is definitely plan your rig around having enough water. And plan for having more water than you think you need, because yeah. I think we vastly underestimated how much water two people would drink. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Adding a dog, definitely we need more now, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. um, our first iteration we only had 14 gallons of water, mm -hmm. which was definitely not enough. Now we no, have, no, not even close. Now we have 20 gallons. 20 gallons yeah. underneath, and that lasts us 10 to 14 days, which mm -hmm. is such a big difference. It makes living on the road so much easier, so we can't emphasize that enough. Yeah, we save time not looking for water by having the water that we need. And another tip is to save before you do this, and save before you go out on a big adventure. Like, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if you're going to have mechanical issues or something go wrong. And you want to always make sure that like you don't need money. But if you do need it, you have it because you saved. And it's like, that's an important factor. Well, and then like help yourself. If you don't know much about cars, which I didn't before we started, buy the Haynes manual for your van and like read through it. Which sounds really boring, but like teach yourself as much as possible as you can about what you're driving. And diagnosing things on the road becomes easier and you just become so much more comfortable in your space. And, and a little bit more self-reliant because yeah. you don't know where you're going to be or when you're going to need help and self-reliance comes in handy. So the most asked question that we get on the road through social media is where do you guys use the bathroom and how do you shower? So we don't technically have an operable bathroom in here because we use the outdoors mostly. When camping on national forest lands, you can use the outdoors, but make sure you bury your waste. Leave no trace principles. Leave no trace principles. And in places you can't, you have to use public restrooms and... And we have an emergency pee bottle. I feel like that's important to know. <laughs> If we're stealth camping or it's freezing outside, we do have a way where we can... We have an emergency pooper. We have a, a she funnel, I think it's called for me. And then as far as showering goes, there's lots of different ways. We used to have a Planet Fitness class. We ended up not really loving that just because I feel like we had some trouble with it. So we ended up canceling that, but now we rely on showers from kind of community centers, community pools. There's lots of places outside of national parks. Truck stops. Truck stops. Or friends' houses. Kind of do everything. But there's a lot out there. I feel like that's one of those things where before you head out on the road, you're worried about where you're going to find access to kind of feel clean and refresh yourself. But there's a ton of options. And where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> and like, if you need to, you'll find a shower. So again, I'm Kat. And I'm Dalton. And I wanted to thank everyone for watching our tour and spending the time with us. We really appreciate you being here. Um, and, and you can find us on social, social media, media <laughs> at Our Home on the Move. That's right. <laughs> yeah.